Yeah. Are you recording right now? No. Uh, so, I mean, you could be recording right now, it's absolutely fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like... I am I recording just, right now. I just cut it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely recording. Yeah. I only got one shot of this. I mean, it's recording, I promise. I get these other things and it's not on camera, we're screwed. I thought it was a more fish. <laughs> So today is the day we finally have our shipment of Malawi and Buna cichlids. Really excited. This is the first time I've ever ordered fish online, so I don't quite know what to expect, but I've done lots of reading about how to treat them. And uh, the first job is to temperature acclimate them. Um, so first things first, we're going to turn the lights off on the tank. We are going to um, do a bit, get a bit of water out of the tank because there'll be some water displacement because I'm going to put the... Uh, fish bags in there with water inside them. So we'll do that quickly. So hopefully these fish have been shipped with a nice heat pack in there. I've um, moved this temperature of this tank down to 24 degrees. Um, these fish will probably be kept at about 25 degrees, but um, they'll have lost some of the heat and shipping. So we're gonna acclimate them at the lower end of uh, what they're happy with. styrene box and the heat pack is still warm which is good good news now there is a risk that you could get some deads on arrival so it's always good to have a phone ready just to take some pictures if need be and then usually the shop will refund you if there is any but you need to take a picture before you open the bag so they can see Hopefully that won't be the case. And there we go. The yellow labs. All looking healthy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is there seven? It should be seven. One's tiny. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there is seven in there. No dead on arrivals, which is great. I'm not quite sure what that black stuff is, but hopefully it's just something to make them feel a bit calmer. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, no deads on arrivals, so no need to take any pictures, which is great. We'll get them in here to acclimate to the temperature. We'll shut the curtains in a little bit as well and uh, leave them in the darkness, but they are looking really nice and they've got a lot of colour to them. Sometimes fish lose a lot of colour when they're shipped. But... And then here, in a much, much smaller bag, ah, and covered, so I can't actually see, so I won't be able to check any deads on arrival until after I get them out, but that's fine. Um, I'm sure if the shop's done that, then they're happy to just take pictures afterwards. But, oh, I can see some through there. I don't know if you can see that in the picture. There's some sneaking through there, and they're tiny as well, which is good, because um, these dog tooths are the dominant ones of these pairings. So we ideally don't want these to be bigger than the labs, because they'll grow up together, and then they'll get used to one another, and then these guys won't dominate so much. So it's good that they're quite small. Um, so yeah, we'll acclimate them as well. Double check that that's all of them. Yep, it is. So we should, when we open these bags in a bit, have um, seven uh, yellow laps and five um, dog tooth cichlids. We will now just put this all down to darkness, get the room as dark as possible, and we'll come back in about half an hour once the uh, fish have acclimatized to the temperature of this water. And then I'll show you the rest of the um, of the unpackaging and uh, getting them into the tank. So we'll be back in half an hour. Okay, uh, so we've had the curtains closed, lights off, um, fish are looking really calm actually, which is really good. And it's been about half hour. Um, have got a little bit of lighting on that in the room at the moment. Um, but as soon as we get these out, um, we will switch everything off and I'll cover the uh, tank with a towel so that it keeps nice and calm for them and nice and dark for them for a few hours. Now, um, these fish will have been shipped um, yesterday and they will have had um, some pure oxygen put into the bag when uh, they were shipped. Um, but nonetheless, what the fish will have been doing in the last 24 hours since they've been shipped 
is producing ammonia in the in the water. So whereas you would normally come back from a local fish shop in maybe you know, 20 minutes, half hour in the car, um, these have had you know 24 hours in water. And so what will have happened um, is that gradually that oxygen is being used up. They're producing CO2. Um, they are also producing ammonia via um, waste and through their gills. And um, so what we could have very, very quickly could get an ammonia spike and the fish would go berserk and it would be really bad for them. So unlike normal um, routines, when you come back to the fish store and you put them in the water and you acclimatize them, sometimes people drip acclimatize. Uh, some people just rest them on top, open the bag up a little bit, put a bit of water in every couple of minutes. Uh, with these guys, we are just going to dump them out of the bag as quickly as possible. So they've been in here for half hour acclimatizing to the temperature, and that is the only thing they're going to acclimatize to. So everything else is going to be new to them. Um, but um, hopefully we've got pH levels that are fairly consistent with what they've been in the, in the fish shop. Um, we've done some water tests uh, yesterday and this has got really good carbonate hardness now because of the uh, limestone in the rock, uh, limestone in the rock, the limestone in the tank, um, and um, it's also got a pH of about 7.9, which is perfect for these fish. Um, so we will just get on with it now. So first I'm gonna do the labs because I can see them, and um, so it might be a bit easier. The, uh, the blues are all covered in that blue packaging, so I just kinda wanna get to grips with how they've packaged these. So these guys, and you can see already quite a lot of waste in there. So we want to try and get rid of um, that water as quickly as possible. So we are going to get the biggest net we've got, put it over an empty bucket. And it looks like these are double wrapped. So the first bag can just come off no problem. Don't have to worry about kind of speed with that one. Once we get to the point where um, we, um, we are opening a bag that's got the water in it. We really need to act quick because as soon as the oxygen hits the um, inside the bag, hits the top of the water, um, we're gonna have big ammonia spikes quite quickly. Not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that black stuff that's in this bag because obviously that's just floating around. I think I'm just gonna let it go into the tank and fish it out later because I don't wanna complicate matters by trying to fish something out of the bag. I'm just gonna dump everything into here. So that's the first bag open. Just it down because it's not coming off that easy. Now I'm going to hold the bag as tight as I can so that I'm not as I'm taking this elastic band off. In fact, I'm just going to cut it. So, quick. Oh. <laughs> Color on them as well, and I can easily get that black stuff out straight away. So, just quickly their towel down because we are going to have a wet basement otherwise. Right, now onto these blues. Now, I'm not sure if this is a second bag, I think it's a second bag that's blue inside here. Um, these yellows are looking awesome. I can't believe how colourful they are straight away. And how they just look quite content straight away, like they're not shy. Great. Right. Try and do a better job this time. And still no water on the floor. The last one was made really hard by the fact that I couldn't get the bag out of the second bag, so I think we'll try and put it out this time. Looks like it's going to be a bit easier as well. Yeah. So they put this in a darkened blue bag. 
and looks like we've also put some dark solution in there as well, which is probably keeping them calm. And this seller seems to know exactly what he's doing uh, in terms of how he ships his fish, so I'm quite confident that these are going to be all right. Those guys are looking amazing. So same process again, quick as possible, hold the top, cut the lid, and then, in fact, the great thing about this bag being so small is we can literally dump them like that. And there is some black stuff in here as well. Straight in. There they are, one, two, three, four, five. All five of them. Just let them swim out nice and gently. One guy doesn't want to go. Cool. Hey. And they are quite a bit smaller than the labs, which is good. Like I said before, they um, eventually will be the dominant ones, so best to let them be smaller at the beginning. They'll all grow to a similar size eventually. There's also one tiny yellow lab in there, and um, the rest of them are all a lot bigger. Anyway, that's that for now. We're just going to put the lid back on, not put the light on there, just put the lid on so we don't have too much uh, condensation coming up the tank. And Temperature is at 24 degrees, perfect for them. I will raise that tomorrow, but for now I'll let them get used to that. And we will just cover the tank as much as possible with this towel. And just use like a book or something just to write it down. And we'll leave them for a little while to chill and enjoy their new tank. And I'll come back in a little bit and show you how awesome they look once they're uh, all relaxed and happy with their tank. So I'll see you in a bit. So we have Ambuna cichlids in the tank. I'm so happy. They're looking awesome already, which is, is remarkable really. Like I honestly was, you know, not, positive about the idea of ordering online if I'm honest I, I was like should I do it shouldn't I do it I don't know how good it's going to turn out it couldn't be more wrong I mean if they've arrived they look amazing they were really really calm they look amazingly healthy um, shout out to the seller Kesgrave Tropicals on eBay I mean they did a great job they packaged them amazingly they evidently know exactly what they're doing how to keep them calm in the bag they um, did all the right things, obviously oxygenated the um, the bag and um, no issues whatsoever. And I just was so surprised to see these really, really colourful fish just staring at me out of the bag. I thought I was going to get really washed out fish um, that, you know, would, would take a few days to kind of settle in. And instead, you know, already got the dog tubes out and about, chilling, enjoying their tank. Um, yeah, it's great. It's great. I just, yeah, I'm so happy. I guess what I'm most happy about is the fact that, like, evidently this environment works really well for them. They are happy. They've gone and they've hidden away in the rocks, which is what Mbuna rock dwellers do. That's the whole, you know, the name Mbuna means rock dweller. Um, and um, they just look really relaxed and happy and content in there, which is really nice. And, I, you know, I think... Unlike a lot of them, other tanks, which are a bit more straightforward, you know, the, the fish I chose for them work with my water here in South Wales. Um, you know, it's not that difficult, if I'm honest, uh, you know, if, to kind of set up a South American cichlid tank, for example, and know that you're going to get most things right. But the Lake Malawi water is such a different kind of type of water to what I have coming out my tap that um, this took a lot of work. I was, you know, this was months and months in the planning. Um, thinking about how to make the right environment that these guys are going to be happy in. Um, and they evidently are, which is great. So, yeah, like, you know, huge sense of pride, I suppose, that I've managed to, you know, get something set up that works really, really well. Yeah, so they're Cintilapia Afra, or dog tooth cichlids, paired with Electric Yellow Labs, or Labinochromis cerulius. Um, and, um, yeah, there's seven um, labs and five dog tooths um, and that's going to be pretty much the stocking for this tank um, possibility that I could have maybe like four more uh, dwarf and at some point and I was thinking 
potentially something on the sort of orangey red spectrum of, of coloration, but they would have to be dwarf and uh, So that's it for this week. I'll finish with a little feeding video. I've made some um, cucumber for them, just boiled up a little bit of cucumber and squeezed out um, any of the air bubbles so that it'll sink to the bottom for them. Um, and um, we'll see how they, they fare on cucumber. Um, and then in general, I'll be kind of keeping updated on this tank, um, keeping an update of any breeding behavior that we see, keeping an update of any changes that I make to the tank if needs be, um, and, and just generally kind of keeping up to date because these are gonna get a lot bigger, so it'll be quite interesting to see uh, what they start to look like and any coloration changes and uh, you know how it works out in terms of male to female ratios not quite sure what I've got here yet but um, all that to be worked out so I'll uh, bring you along the journey and you can follow this tank along with me um, so I'll leave you now with some panning shots of this uh, tank um, looking I think really really nice today um, and, uh, and show you the fish enjoying their first attempt at eating cucumber as ever, if you haven't already, please uh, hit the subscribe button so you can see more of my videos in the future. I uh, have new content coming out every Tuesday. Um, and I'll, um, yeah, I'll leave you now with panning shots of this awesome looking tank with these awesome looking fish. Thanks for watching. Chromis ceruleus, Labida chromis ceruleus, Sina tilapia afra, Sina tilapia afra, Labina chromis ceruleus. <laughs> oh, God. I think I get a few more things right given I've got loads of notes on the side there. <laughs> right, 